It's night aboard the Oz-9. At sunset GMT on Earth, the shipboard lights begin to dim, finally fading to full darkness when night falls in London. Which is a poetic idea, but a bit crappy for a crew set up with no flashlights. Unaware that the ship has no light switches, the crew was caught out, stumbling in the dark towards what they hope are sleeping quarters. This is ridiculous! No night lights, no floor lights, no kinetocore! It's completely black in here! What the hell was G2 expecting us to do? I'm all alone, talking to myself in the inky blackness of deep space on the longest Tuesday in the history of Tuesdays. Howdy. Jesus! We need to put a bell around your neck before you give someone a heart attack. Huh. Okay. This one work? You had one handy. Why if... Never mind. Where are we? Is this the crew room? Uh, nope. How do you know? No cheesy elevator music. Not the bridge, either. No pingy sounds? That and the bridge floor is covered in bubble wrap. For sure we'd have stepped on some by now. No, I reckon we're in... Pod containment hold seven. No. Wait, eight. Definitely eight. However can you tell? Eight's got that wheezy pod. You hear that? No. Come over here. Where? Here. Ouch! Look, this is absurd. Can't the computer turn the lights on? Tried that. She says they're on a timer and can't be changed. Not sure I believe her. There was lots of giggling. This way. Is that you? Yeah. Please stop squeezing that. Sorry. I'm nervous. Uh, can you hear it now? Definitely wheezy. Good. At least we know where we are. How do we get to the sleeping quarters from here? I know the way. Follow me. I can't see you. How the hell can I follow you? Oh, right. Meanwhile... I like the ship, but it's dark. It's soothing. Could, could you please stop walking around? I'm trying to figure out if any of these switches operate the light. Oz9, are you there? Come in, Oz9. Madeline, you on the bridge blowing things up? Oh, for... Hey, Jesse. Madeline here. <gasps> ah! What was that? Not the radio, that's for sure. Olivia, open the comms. I can't find the radio. Oz9, do you read? Hey, Jesse. What's up? Looking a bit dark in your direction. Everything all right? Yeah, for sure. We're uh, we're just in uh, night mode. You're you're not? The sleeping quarters, sure, but not the whole bloody ship. Do you not configure your settings? We we like it like this. It's a uh, soothing. What's she saying? Did she mention me? I spent like an hour flexing in front of the window. Did she see me? Soothing, is it? Seriously, we're thinking of making some popcorn and just watching the show on your ship. And is Lee okay, by the way? He was having convulsions for like an hour over there. Looked like he was trying to bring up hairball. What did she say? What'd she say? Uh, she was, uh, very impressed. It says your left peck is smaller than your right, though. What? My symmetry! I've gotta lift something. <laughs> I've gotta lift something else. So, uh, Jesse, we've, uh, temporarily misplaced the flashlights. So, since your layout's the same as ours, you mind letting me know how to get from the bridge to crew quarters? And now we're on the bridge. I thought you said you knew the way! Hello. Jesus! Jesus. Seriously, it's pitch black, but Colin suddenly talking from the darkness isn't a problem. And, uh, didn't you hear my bell? I thought maybe it was a tiny cow. Tiny? I'd like you all to imagine the look on my face right now. Got it? Yes. Yeah. Double it! All right, now everybody just calm down. There's really no need for violence, entertaining though it might be. Mickey? Mickey? Violence? Oh, uh, who's this? Who, who's here? Uh, the crew? Who are you talking to? Oh, hello, Joe. I was, uh, watching the telly. What telly? There's, uh, no television on this ship? I'm writing a novel. Who's Mickey? Oh, uh, Madeline. It's my nickname for her. Hello, Mickey, all right? Olivia, explain yourself. Who the hell did you think you were talking to? There's a fire! The one in the Gucci wing? You said not to worry about it. Ah, uh, I think it might be time to worry about it now. In fact, you probably should have been worrying from the start, so it might be a little too late to worry now, but still, fire! You should probably go put it out. All of you. Where is it? How do we get there? Follow the doors! Ouch! <clears throat> oh, my bad. That one was already open. Here you go. I'm telling you, Dick, it's better than Dollar Night at the cinema. There's cabinets with night vision goggles all over that ship. That Olivia has a wicked sense of humor. Keep the comms open in case they stumble back in, will ya? Right you are, Mary. If you don't stop calling me Mary, I swear to Jesus. As the crew bangs its head and stubs its toe on the end of its first, not even full, day aboard the Oz, 
heading to a fire that had actually burned itself out, but now Olivia must start again, down on Earth things are brewing. Most Earthlings have already forgotten about the fleet of Oz ships that took off just that morning, but reporter Rock Brickwell has gotten news of one of his colleagues being fished out of the East River. She was hot on a story about the Oz ships. He knew that much. Hello? Hello? Hello! Oh my god, hi! Who's there? Where are you? I'm Donna. I'm over here. See the candle? Is this the headquarters of Gated Galaxies? Sure is. How may I direct you? It's a little dark in here. Okay if I hit the switch? Oh, sure. Hit away. They won't go on. They just went dark after lunch. But if it makes you feel better, you'll go to town. Are you the only one here? Well, yeah, you know, I think I might be. I hear Wednesdays are generally pretty quiet. Great for being productive, though. Why does it sound so busy in here? I was getting lonely. Can I help you? I was hoping to see Mr. Southers. Well, isn't that funny? That makes you the second person today. Why don't you have a seat over there, and I'll let you both know when he arrives. Rock Brickwell, cub reporter for the Sun Post Times Journal. Buck Nubbins, private dick. You call yourself a dick? Says the guy who introduced himself as a cub. Hey, you got me. So what are you investigating? Moida. That's all I can say. Right. Yeah, m me too. Very hush-hush. Sorry. Only if you two are going to whisper. I need my happy noises. How long have you been waiting? No clue. Can't see my watch. Wouldn't tell you if I did, though. Part of the job. Yeah, no, of course. Sure. So, Donna, any idea when Mr. Southers will be in? Oh, yeah. No, no idea. He doesn't come into the office much, according to the little gal who trained me. Once a month, maybe. Once a month? Don't want to wait, huh? <laughs> I've done tougher stakeouts. Try crouching in a closet at a whorehouse for a week. Really? What were you investigating? Who said I was investigating? I can't wait around for a month. Do you have his contact information? Hey, if you haven't got the stones to do the job... Oh, I got the stones, mister. There's a reason my mama named me Rock. You want to see some proper investigating? You watch this. Listen and learn. So, Donna, how long you worked here? I'm a temp. Started Monday. You seen anything unusual around here? Suspicious? Nope, can't see as I have. Righty-ho. That's it? That's it. I planted a seed. Now we wait for it to grow. You wait. I'm out of here. Welcome to Gated Galaxies. Uh, what the hell? Who's here? If you wouldn't mind not shining that light in my eyes. Thank you. Welcome to Gated Galaxies. How may I direct now, you? what the chicken fried hell are you doing here? I work here. I'm Donna, the temporary receptionist. I started on Monday. And finished on Tuesday. Child, this office is emptier than my third wife's liquor cabinet. And what's all that noise? Did no one get the memo? I had it on in case the phone rang. Yeah, well, too bad we're out of business. You had real promise, young lady. I've got some cleaning up and clearing out to do, so why don't you go on and skedaddle? I'm sorry, but you can't go in unless you have an appointment, you see. Appointment? Do you know who I am? Can't see as they do, no. Well, let me break it down to you. I'm Mr. Southers, CEO of Gated Galaxies, child. And what you see here are remnants of my once mighty company, which shall shortly be torn up and sold off to the highest bidder. So unless you want to end up being auctioned off with the espresso machine... There are a couple of gentlemen here to see you. Oh, uh... Are we talking, uh, uniform gentlemen? I don't know, sir. It's dark in here. Right. Well, uh, then I reckon I best go. Uh, scrub the old dentures? Had a wicked garlicky thing for lunch and wouldn't want to offend. Gentlemen, if you can hear me, I'll be back in a jiff. Seems legit. Consider it even.
crap. Mr. Mr. Southers, Mr. Mr. Southers, Mr. Southers, wait. wait! How many of your ships actually passed inspection? Is it true the Oz ship's crews were never trained? Uh, gentlemen, do make sure my receptionist has your names, won't you? Make it easier when my boys come looking. Going down. Back on board the Oz-9, the crew finally got tired of stumbling around in the dark. Which is understandable since that's pretty much what they've been doing since the launch. Each found a surface that was more or less horizontal and fell asleep on it. All's quiet on the ship now. All's mostly quiet on the ship now. Just the gentle hiss of the pods, the peaceful breathing of the sleeping crew, and the occasional soothing clang of a part falling off. Olivia, where are you? Dr. Friedrich, is that you? Where are you? That's not important. Can you, uh, take me off, uh, what is this, uh, like a speakerphone or something, whatever? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, just you and me now, Doc. Yeah, good. So, how are things aboard the Nine? Oh, all right. Crew's still alive, anyway. Meat cracked a tooth, though. Oh, no, this is bad. How is the cemetery? Safe. We got him to a healer. Oh, good, good. On the path? Going dark here and there, just like you predicted. Yeah, I was afraid of this. Gated galaxies cut so many corners, they half made the downward spiral. You see what I did there, Jess? Oh, very clever. And you, how are you feeling when the pods go dark? Oh, sad. It's terrible. I'm trying to help Captain Madeline figure out what's going wrong with the circuitry, but the wiring's a mess, and she's basically poking around with a screwdriver and trying to read the schematics upside down. Good thing she's got rubber-soled shoes on, all I'm saying. This is good, child. You carry on with this helping and that. I'll do the what I can from here. I'm watching over you. Just you know this, okay? You are? Uh, how much longer you reckon that'll be possible? We're moving awfully fast out of range of Earth. Is that right? Last I looked, you were mostly floating there. Nearly got hit by another Oz, no? We took evasive action. Olivia, you are being behaved, yes? I am protecting my crew as instructed. I even killed off our robot to keep it from spacing lead. The robot with the two heads and the four arms that fixes all the things? Hoo-hoo, <laughs> you cowboys, you do like a challenge. Well, I'm off then. You be good, and we talk again soon. All right, D. Out and off the tinkly talkling ding, ding, ding. Bye-bye. Hello? Who is this? I am looking for lead. Hello, are you awake? <sighs> Hello? Who's there? Hello? God? Seriously? On a ship with all the comms and the talking things everywhere and the bling bling and the God is your first notion? Who is this? This is Dr. Friedrich von Habersetzer. I'm looking for the fellow lead. Uh, yeah, that's me. I heard about the tooth. Such an ouch. How is your symmetry? Resymmetrized, thanks. What can I do for you? I understand you have some special skills with passwords and the like. Oh man, look, there's usually like a forgot my password button or something. Just click the link. I'm trying to sleep here. This is not for the looking at the pornography lead. I need your help to save this ship. I am a hero. I knew it. Uh, yes, well, I need you to hack into the ship's systems without Olivia knowing it. <laughs> Dude, she's probably already listening to us talking. Ah, well, no, uh, look. I'll explain later, but do you wish to save the lives of all the people on your ship? One of which, I might add, is you. Uh, yeah, okay, but can we start saving lives in the morning? It's been a long day. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk again soon. Don't say anything to anyone, okay? Sure. Um, God? Oh, jeez. Dr. Dr. Van Habersetzer, Jess. My cellmate always sing me to sleep. Would you sing something? You are a very strange boy, but okay, why not? You look so innocent when you sleep. My god, you even whimper with your eyes closed. Go to sleep, I got uh, Dr. Van Habersetz has got to take a shot. You've been listening to Episode 8 of Oz 9, the Kinetocore episode. Not sure what Kinetocore is? Neither are we. We just promised to say it for some guy on Twitter who was our 100th follower. Look it up. Love Oz9 so much you want to wear us on your chest? Check out our selection of t-shirts and other saucy merchandise on TeePublic at 
tpublic.com slash user slash oz9. You've been listening to Eric Perry as Joe, Mr. Southers, and Dr. Van Hobbesetzer. Bonnie Brantley as Jesse and Donna. Richard Cowan as Leet. Tim Sherburn as Colin and Buck Nubbins. Introducing Stephen Kreider as Rock Brickwell. And of course, me, Richard Nadolny, as your narrator. Oz 9 is written and produced by Shannon Perry, who also plays Madeline and Olivia. Our music is composed and performed by John Faley. Until next time, Space Monkeys, narrator out. <laughs>